most interesting thing that I found when I started working with the marine units is that uh, I felt that they were really unprotected when they, do, when they did the boardings. Nobody was protecting them. And uh, I found that interesting because as a sniper, myself and, a, and, a, and an sniper instructor, I, I felt we could do much better. Uh, recent developments in equipment have, uh, have given us the capability of protecting the, the boats when they are boarding and uh, when they are operating against the piracy. And I think uh, that this is just uh, a little presentation about why we have th that new capability because of the improvements in equipment and uh, the improvements in training and uh, that we have to rethink the way we are doing things because we can actually protect the guys that are on harm's way before they actually face uh, a very bad uh, visibility situation where they are really, really uh, fighting uh, an enemy on a, on, a, on a superior position, which is not the best condition for a tactical unit. So let's uh, start with it. Um, as, I, as you see, my name is Eduardo Abril de Foncuberta. Uh, I'm a sniper instructor, and I, by, by chance, I, I'm the world champion right now in 50 cal, 1,000 yard shooters. Um, I want to introduce you uh, the basic problem uh, we have right now. This is my email, in just in case somebody wants to contact me or make any, any uh, questions about it. The problem we have right now is that uh, for, for all kinds of, uh, of uh, visit board uh, search and seizure operations, or either you, you go with a boat or you go with a helicopter. And uh, helicopters are very, very complex machines and they tend to have some issues. So you end up having to board the, the ships and uh, with, uh, with the ribs. That, uh, that uh, is uh, rather complicated because they are very unprotected when they get close. That's one of the reasons for that ballistic protection you talked about. Okay. Uh, you also have to do a lot of uh, overwatch uh, operations and uh, uh, that is very well covered right now with the current uh, sniping pro uh, protocols. Uh, you have to uh, do some surgical intercept and uh, disable fire, especially with the 50 cal. And uh, through uh, the onboard protection of vessels, uh, can be you maintain you can actually maintain a perimeter, a rather long perimeter, out from the RPG uh, uh, range with a 50 cal. And uh, with cu current rifles, we can actually do it. Uh, and also, please remind that this is based and in, in protection for the ribs and protection against the, 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 uh, the skiffs and the, and the enemy forces. Uh, okay, uh, the solution, as I see it, is uh, the application of, uh, of uh, new capabilities give us the possibility of apply, applying sniper fire as surgical fire, which it, it wasn't uh, possible on the sea uh, a few years ago. Uh, we can support the assault teams, which we couldn't do either. And uh, uh, we have, Right now, with the uh, with the 50 cal's, with uh, with uh, a rifle ammunition, with a special new grade AA, you have a very good accuracy up to up to a thousand meters, and you can actually uh, get the the mothership rather close to the skiff without risking having an RPG round. Uh, we you can actually be the the eyes of your commander because you have high power uh, optics and uh, very trained eyes behind the optics, and uh, you can actually maintain the perimeter in ports. Uh, which uh, you cannot do right now without having a, a, a huge uh, gun risking lo lots of collateral damage. The, basically, the snipers, even though they don't shoot, they are the best, the best eyes on the ship to protect the ship or the assault teams. But with the snipers, we have a lot of advantages. We have, a, we have an extra safety for the teams, which will be most happy to know that, that somebody's taking care of them when they get close to, uh, to the enemy. Uh, you have a very low collateral damage. You don't have to shoot a, an M2 machine gun or a 25 millimeter cannon, which can kill everybody on board, even small kids or something, and make, make the news afterwards. Uh, you, have to, you can put out uh, a lot of uh, surgical fire. Uh, you, can, you have a lot of advantage because you have a lot of, of uh, capacity, of op optical capacity. And uh, you also have the capability of surgical elimination of the, of the, of the commander of the enemy unit or the, or the chief of the parrot unit, which will leave them without head, without command. And that's also a possibility. And uh, with a multipurpose round, you can actually disable 
the, the skiff or the enemy boat without having to risk having to shoot a machine gun against them, which mostly all, all the times ca cause uh, injuries or death. Uh, it's also very cost effective because if you do it right, only a few rounds of, uh, of sniper ammunition will be needed. You don't need to deploy helicopters. You don't need to deploy uh, pro drones. You don't need to deploy anything else but good and accurate fire. And also, you will be able to keep the mothership, which is a rather big boat with, uh, with a captain that has uh, the, the last word on a, every tactical situation, and you can keep it outside RPG range, which is a rather complicated situation for them. We also have disadvantages. Uh, sniping is a very complex uh, tactical uh, role, very complex. It takes many time to get, it, get proficient at it. Uh, it's very reliant on a high level of, uh, of training and also on very specialized equipment. And uh, that specialized, equi specialized equipment is not right now deployed. Most of the units are using equipment designed 25 years ago, and it's not up to the task on the level of, uh, of tactical uh, use I'm, I'm talking about. The skill level has to be maintained all the time. If you don't, if you don't keep your, your snipers trained, uh, eventually during the boat deployment of six months, the skill level will go down radically. So you have to keep them trained, and that, that's very difficult on a small boat or a small ship. And uh, there's a high cost in, in training with uh, ribs because you will have to deploy the whole unit, a boat, and lots of things that may, may, may make the actual cost of the full unit training with the snipers very, very expensive. But the, the operational cost is really low. What we have right now, most of the, uh, of the navies right now are using limitedly uh, sniper fire uh, when they are very, very close. Uh, and most of the times they are using uh, 50 cal um, uh, M2 Brownings, which are not as accurate as they should be. The fire is not accurate. And uh, I really don't think that it's the best suited uh, weapon for the role of protecting your rib units when they, are, when they assault an enemy uh, skiff. Uh, it's a liability. We have found in the Spanish Navy that once you start shooting, you end up hitting the wrong target because it's not an accurate gun. And also, it's, uh, it's uh, inaccurate. Not because that the gun is inherently accurate, but it's not designed for, for a surgical fire. It's designed for a suppressing role. So that's uh, one big issue also. And uh, most of the times, uh, people uh, apply the, the, the fire of the 50 cal without the use of multipurpose ammunition. They use ball ammunition for all, all kinds of strange reasons. And uh, the, 50, the, the M33 50 cal ammunition is just a big bullet. It won't do a lot of harm on a skiff. It will damage, uh, it, and uh, the, the, if you shoot a lot, it will damage the skiff, but it will injure more, injure more the, the occupants than, uh, than damage the skiff. With the multipurpose ammunition, you will see a, a little bit later, it, you can actually stop the skiffs. Uh, this is the kind of accuracy I'm talking about. Basically, with the M33 ball, as you can see on the left, uh, you have uh, at 550 meters, which is 600 yards, basically, uh, you, you, can, you are barely stri striving to hit a human target with the M2. And uh, with a sniper rifle, even with, uh, with uh, the old Barrett, you are still on the head, on empirical uh, precision. I mean, yes, a sniper shooting on the ground. That's the way they do this, this kind of testing. So you actually have the capability. And uh, this is just the, the standard NATO uh, rounds from 10 years ago. This has improved about double. Uh, which are the typical sniper scenarios? Uh, your boats try to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to search uh, or, or seizure uh, a skiff or a boat, and you can find all kinds of no-shoots down there. Uh, there, are, there are hostages, there are uh, uh, enemies, but they are mixed with other people that shouldn't be shot at, and that's what precludes the commander to have a, a, a clear green light to the go ahead. So the, the crews go against the enemy unprotected because they cannot be protected from, uh, from the machine gun fire. With the, with the snipers, you can actually uh, get outside the RPG range and, uh, and still protect your crews. Uh, with all the restricting uh, rules of engagement we have right now, for example, in Atlanta, 
we have had all kinds of trouble with the commanders not being able, forced by politically decisions and uh, le letting the pirates go away because he couldn't dare and shoot because there were other no shoots on the boats and he was really worried about injuring them and making, making the CNN afterwards. So with, uh, with the snipers, you can actually uh, get, get more flexible and more accurate decisions for the commanders. Okay, we, right now we have been using snipers for a long time on all kinds of, of operations and uh, some were good, some were bad, but they all demonstrate that even with the, with, the, with the equipment we had 10 years ago, it could be done. We just needed a little push in training and equipment. Uh, in the Spanish Navy, he did a, a good operation that it didn't end up so good as, after all, but because of other, other reasons. But the snipers were able to clean a, uh, the Sontan, which uh, headed from, with some missiles from uh, uh, Syria to Yemen, and uh, in combination with the SEALs, which actually stopped the, the, the boat. And they demonstrated that they can, you can actually do a lot of work with snipers against targets. Uh, then a few years later, on the, the SEAL Team uh, 5, uh, sorry, 6, uh, uh, rescued the, the Captain uh, Phillips from, uh, with a brain bridge, with a USS brain bridge, by, by sniper shot at 150 yards, something like that. You could actually uh, do it much better right now, but this is the basics, the basics for the work we are doing that right now. What I mean is that uh, this is done right now, but you can extend with the current equipment we have, you can extend it about double. So you can actually be, be safer and you can actually protect your, your boat units that are on harm's way. How, how can you do this? How can you uh, enhance the capacity of protection for the assault teams? Uh, basically with a new equipment that is being developed right now, with uh, structured training, something that nobody was doing a few years ago, and integration with the tactical boat crews and cross training. Uh, right now there are some new books, like, uh, like the one you saw, uh, which is from Friedrich Johnson, which is a rather interesting book being used in all the world. It's the best book uh, about maritime sniping. You have uh, new systems of, of training for uh, structured training, which includes uh, moving targets, moving platforms, all kinds of stuff that uh, very few units in the world did a few years ago. So all that uh, helps the commander have trust on the snipers and be able to take the decision, which is a very, very complex decision for him to take that uh, to use the deadly force because he trusts that they can be able to put surgical shots against the enemy. Uh, it's very important to integrate all that into the, the boat crews because they need to know how the snipers will operate and they need to know that they are being protected and how they are being protected. If not, it won't be, mean anything because they have been using snipers for 20 years and they did never feel protected by them. So they need to know that ha something has changed and the, the, the level of accuracy they can afford. And they also, it's very important for the cross-training because you have to integrate the snipers, which are not integrated in most navies right now, and the commander has to know that he can count on them when the, when the, uh, when the tough moments come. And that's not done in most navies anywhere right now. The new equipment we have is capable of, of uh, an incredible accuracy. There you have... Five shots at a thousand meters, sorry, thousand yards, which is 1.9 inches. I mean, you can do awesome things right now with a 50 cal. Uh, you have lots of uh, software capacity, which wasn't available five years ago. We can compute moving targets, different angles, different seas, swells. You can compute mostly everything. We are shooting at mile and a half, two miles, very, very far. And uh, we are doing it all day long. I mean, not, not one, many people is doing it. So there is a, cap a new capability, new rifles, new ammunitions, and we have to make profit of it. Why? Because it, it would be stupid not to do it. it. We cannot use the training methods that you were used 20 years ago because we have new equipment. The new rifles we have are much more lethal because they are much more accurate and the bullets are designed to do exactly what we want them to do. They are more accurate. We have increased the accuracy of the sniper systems radically. We are, they are more rugged. 
basically, most of the, of the rifles used right now were designed 25 years ago. The new rifles are incredibly rugged compared to those. And they are marine proof. There are new coatings, new finishes that are, have been proved uh, in the US and uh, in many other places, and like PVD, things like that, and they're really, really marine proof. Okay, the first, the first step towards all this is training. I believe in training uh, really, really deeply uh, because it, it involves very little acquisition money, very little budget. It's an attitude more than anything else. You don't have to do a lot of things. Just uh, get your mind into the new mood, get the new protocols, and, and start implementing them. Uh, you have to do that for the snipers. They have to learn how to work the new ways. You have to do it with the boat crews. They have to learn to work the snipers with the new capabilities. And you, they, you have to do it with the assault teams. And uh, you have to also train the people on the, on the ship, on the mothership, on the go plat, because they know that they are safe, because they are being protected by somebody that can keep a perimeter, because they, they know they, do, they don't have it right now. You, there are tons of videos on YouTube. Basically, they protect the ship when the, when the pirates is hit, they are hitting the, on the board. And that's crazy. I mean, you don't have to get that close. You can do very, very good shots for 500 meters. From three to 500, you can actually keep them off, and you're basically safe from RPG rounds. OK, you have also uh, new, new capabilities, as I told you. There are new books that tell you what to do, how to do it. Uh, there are new uh, uh, books about uh, uh, structured development of the sniper uh, shootings and the sniper uh, teams, and you have to take profit from that. That was not available two years ago. You have to train the, the sniper uh, the, with the boat crews because they need to trust him. They are going to board a ship and they're going to have nearly uh, shots flying over their heads, and they need to trust that these guys, these guys are able to do it. They need to understand how they work. They need to, do, to know what they do if, if uh, if the if the start, uh, the, bo the bullets start flying around, and they need to help them by getting off the way if if needed, uh, they need to 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 help them with communications. The snipers have uh, very a lot of of, uh, of issues with communicating with the assault teams because they need to tell them what they are seeing. They they are the eyes of the assault teams, and nobody's taking profit of that either. They go through the commander and back to the assault team, and that should be straight direct. And also, they have to know how to react when the, when the sniper fire starts. Basically, it's all revolving around the concept I, I just said. Get everybody trained together to learn about the new capabilities. OK, once you have some training and people are starting to get to the maximum performance of their equipment, the current equipment, you have to start finding new ammunition. That doesn't involve a lot of money either. I mean, it's just finding around. And don't, don't relax and don't take the, the, the typical ammunition the Navy gives you. Find There are very good ammunitions out there that even with the current rifles and, and optics will give you a lot of extra performance. Uh, it will be more accurate. It will have better terminal effects. It, it will give you flexibility and it can be used right now with the, with the equipment we have. Uh, uh, most of the people right now in, in military units uh, have uh, now more rifles. I see everywhere that the, the, the snipers are not having this ammunition because they are issued machine gun ammunition because that's what they have. They, they say, okay, 50 is a 50, and they give them, this cuts the performance of the teams radically. It shouldn't happen, and it happens everywhere. The, the multipurpose ammunition, I will go very quickly through this because we don't have a lot of time, but basically you have it on the presentation if somebody's interested. This is the very interesting thing because this was secret a few years, a few years ago. And, uh, and uh, this is what's inside a multi-purpose round. Uh, people have been using it for 20 years, but they didn't know what's inside because it was secret. All the, all the bullets from all the ammunition multi-purposes are made in Namo in, no, in, uh, in Norway. And they didn't allow anybody to go in. It's, it, if you cut it, it explodes. So people didn't know. And this is what's inside. And it's a very complex uh, thing. It really works fine, and it does, has a lot of capability. It does a lot of, of things. You can take a look. It's uh, suppressing fire against light targets. You have, this is what it does behind the target. It's an incendiary effect, multipurpose. Uh, means that it has incendiary, suppression, 
fragmentation, basically it will burn the, the machinery, all the oils inside the, the skiff, so it will give you a lot of capability. It can also penetrate heavy armor up to something that is supposedly secret, but it's around, around 25 millimeters <laughs> anyway. And uh, it's, uh, it's a thick, very thick armor. And, uh, and th therefore, we have a lot of capability with the ammunition too. Then we have right now incredible optics. Even in the worst situations, you can actually uh, find your target. You have uh, ballistic uh, computers that can help the sniper uh, correct for very complex situations in shooting angles, shooting up, shooting down, very diff uh, distance, uh, uh, range distances. And that's available right now. You just have to take profit of it. And uh, you have thermals. You have lots of things that can help the snipers. Uh, the new equipment, uh, uh, talking about rifles, uh, gives you a lot of possibilities that are not used. Most of the navies right now uh, still use the old 7.62 rifles, which have a range about 800 meters. Even then, on the sea, they are limited. Uh, and the 50 with non Ralphos ammunition or the old designs of rifles. Right now, you can have much better equipment. 338 Lapua can shoot really straight like laser at, at 700 meters, 800 meters, and afford a lot of shots, even in the worst uh, wind situations. Also, the new 50 cal, the new, the new uh, Barrett is much more accurate than the old one, which wasn't really a, a, a sniper weapon, it was an anti material weapon. Uh, the new rifle is truly a sniper weapon. It's sniper accurate, so it will give the sniper teams on the, on the ships uh, a fully sniper capability. This is the, the idea. It says you can point the, the, with lasers. You can designate targets for any uh, fire support, for any, any, any kind of, of, uh, of uh, targeting system. And uh, basically, that's it. Uh, all, all this is just food for thought. Uh, you have to rethink when you work with, uh, with protection forces. You have to find out what are their, their true capabilities. Uh, if they don't know about this, uh, tell them because there's a whole new world of protection for the ribs if you, if you use the new equipment and the new training available. Thank you very much.